I'm Christine Benz for Morningstar.com. Just as stock investors might keep an eye on insider buying and selling, so can fund investors glean some intelligence from what their managers are doing. Joining me to discuss this topic is Russ Kinnell. He's Director of Manager Research for Morningstar. Russ, thank you so much for being here. Good to be here. So, Russ, let's discuss this data. Um, it wasn't always available, what uh, fund managers own of their own funds. It, it is, though, in SEC filings. Let's discuss where investors can find this information. That's right. The SEC requires that fund companies disclose how much managers invest in their funds. They, they have to dis disclose it in range, is not the absolute dollar amount. And it's disclosed once a year in the statement of additional information. Uh, they'll show what, what each manager owns in, in the fund in those ranges. Okay, so why do you think this information can be a useful indicator for investors? They have a lot of data points to keep track of. Why should investors take a look at this? Well, for a couple of reasons. One, I think fund, invest, fund managers are the savviest investors in their own funds, right? They know their funds better than anyone else. And so it makes sense that their investments would signal uh, both their views of the fund, but also their, their views of whether they're going to stick around in the investment and in, in the fund. It shows uh, alignment with investor interests. In other words, if, if the manager's got a big chunk of their own personal wealth in the fund, then clearly they're aligning their interests more with uh, fund holders, whereas if instead maybe their, their main incentive is around their bonus for their fund or something else, then they could have different incentives. So uh, there are a number of reasons. And then finally, I've tested and found that there is some predictive power. There's not a lot of fund data points with predictive power. This isn't as proven as expense ratios, but it does seem that funds with higher manager investment levels are more likely to outperform than those with lower manager investment levels. And finally, a large chunk of funds, the managers don't even have a, a penny in their own funds. So it seems pretty clear to me if I can choose between funds with no manager investment and those with high manager investment, I want the high manager investment. Right. Now, are there some categories where we give managers a little bit of, of a pass on that front? Because I know that we look at this when we're uh, doing the parent assessment, which is part of the, the fund rating system. Um, if the manager is running, say, a target date fund geared toward investors who are much younger than that manager is, do, do you factor that in at all? Um, somewhat. So in our parent rating, we, we look at across the board firm investment in the funds because that's a great indicator of whether the firm has buy-in. There we don't really cut much slack because you, you don't want to go through 200 Vanguard funds and, and, and look at every little detail. But when you're looking at an individual fund, we definitely do. We look at the manager's age, uh, how many funds they run. Uh, obviously, for instance, let's say you have an index fund manager. They might not be paid as well as an active manager and they might be running 10 funds. So maybe it's not that important. And, and, and uh, so we take those into account or say it's a single state muni fund. Uh, obviously, if you are managing uh, a single state muni fund for uh, the state of New Jersey, but you're living in California, it's understandable why you wouldn't own that. So we look at those details when we analyze the fund. But by and large, you, you should expect your manager to uh, invest a significant sum of their money in their funds uh, or else why would you? So one thing before we get started, and we are going to talk about some specific funds where managers have been buying their, their own funds and, and selling them. You mentioned that when you look through some of these SEC filings, that, that the data here is a little bit uh, sloppier than some other data points that might come in SEC filings. You've called fund companies and found discrepancies. So I think you want to make the point that investors should proceed with caution on this front. That's right. Uh, for some reason, this is a data point that fund companies don't pay much attention to. So if you think about expense ratios, holdings, a lot of those things, the fund companies go over that with a fine-tooth comb. Their auditors go over it. So those are very, very rarely have, have a mistake in them. But for some reason, this, this form of disclosure is rife with errors. I regularly find uh, errors. I'll call the fund company and say, so why did this fund manager uh, sell all their shares, they'll say, oops, we didn't notice that. And, and so it is a, a, an area where they're a little sloppier, unfortunately. Even so, we still found some predictive value. So I, I think it's, it's usually right, but, but you do have to take it with a grain of salt. Okay. Uh, I would also add that uh, currently you have to look in the uh, SEC filing, 
but we are bringing these to Morningstar.com data pages uh, soon, so soon these will be a lot easier to find. Okay, good news. So let's get into some of the funds that you highlighted in, in the most recent issue of, of Fund Investor where managers have been buying their shares. Let's start with TCW Total Return. Tad Ravel uh, has been a purchaser of, of that core bond fund. Let's talk about that. This is a fund that famously changed hands from MetWest to, uh, or, or from, from Jeffrey Gunlock and the TCW team to the Met West team when Gunlock and TCW had their big divorce. Uh, so they've been running it for about uh, three, four years now. And Tad Ravel has gone from zero dollars to over a million dollars uh, invest in the fund. I certainly think that's a, a good sign when you, when you see a manager uh, showing further commitment to a fund. There's a fund we like. We rate it bronze. Okay. Another fund you highlight is BBH Global Core Select. Let's talk about that one. Yeah, this is a fund that's uh, pretty new. It's it's only a, got about a three-year track record, uh, but it was encouraging to see that uh, Timothy Harch uh, now is over a million dollars invested in this fund, uh, similar to his domestic fund, BBH uh, Core Select. So, uh, it's a similar strategy, only on a global scale as opposed to U.S. We don't rate it yet, but I'm encouraged to, to see this uh, significant commitment. Is that something that you like to see if, a, if, a, if it's a new fund where you see that manager step up and, and put his or her own assets in it right out of the box? Definitely. It, it tells me that this isn't a, a, a trend-chasing fund. They're not looking to just throw some funds out there and see what sticks. This is clearly uh, something they view as a, as a core investment. That is, to see that level of commitment, I, I think, is a really good sign. I've seen other times when a fund might be launched, it's kind of gimmicky, and sure enough, the manager doesn't invest in the fund. Is it perhaps also a signal that the manager is finding good opportunities in the space where the new fund is launching? Uh, certainly. I, I think so, sometimes uh, fund companies launch funds because it's a hot space and they just want to capitalize. Sometimes it's because that's actually where their investments are leading them. And so I, I think that is a positive sign here. Okay. Um, the last fund is a, a, a fixed income fund, Fidelity Strategic Income. Ford O'Neill has been a big buyer there recently, according to the data. That's right. He went from the $10,000 to $50,000 range to over a million, uh, which is obviously a good sign. Uh, you know, this is a somewhat aggressive fund. They've got junk bonds, foreign uh, bonds, and, and kind of a wide variety of, of bonds in order, that have decent income. So I take it as a positive sign that he's committing a lot to a somewhat risky strategy. Okay, Russ, interesting research. Thank you so much for being here to discuss it with us. You're welcome. Thanks for watching. I'm Christine Benz for Morningstar.com.